Hi, Dave and Beth Nicodemus here from Beyond the Walls Community Church, and we are here with our virtual Bible series, video number four, which is on chapter three of Messy Spirituality by Mike Iaconelli. Uh, this chapter is packed uh, with just incredible information, um, but it focuses a lot on a concept that Mike Iaconelli defines as doing God wrong. Uh, basically being uh, what can be characterized as unspiritual, uh, not being Christian enough, not being a good enough follower of Jesus. And he emphasizes this whole idea and kind of picks it apart by depicting the story from John chapter 9 of Jesus healing a blind man. One of the points that he makes that really stands out is in the story, the blind man's parents were, were scared and the Pharisees were really concerned with the theology around Jesus' Jesus's healing of the blind man. And here's what Mike Iaconelli observed. And here is the biggest tragedy of all. Not one person in the entire ninth chapter of John, including the blind man's parents, do what any follower of Christ should have done. Throw a party. And then he goes on to say, um, the spiritual life is not just about rules and regulations, teaching and theology, lectures and sermon. Life with Jesus is meant to be lived, not smothered, dissected, inspected, or condemned. The blind man should have had the time of his life. And I think too often we see even today that we can get so caught up in the rules and the regulations that we sometimes forget to celebrate what God is doing in people's lives. We were brainstorming uh, what example, an example of that might be, and it brought us to kind of some comments and we've heard about um, people comparing churches. And honestly, if a church is preaching the gospel of Jesus and is Bible-based, I personally believe it is not our place to put them down. Uh, and we can look at a church, maybe it's a mega church uh, with thousands of people and we don't really enjoy their particular style of worship or we don't agree with how they do ministry, not necessarily why they do the ministry, but how they do it. And our human tendency is to put them down and almost kind of, you know, they have 300 people baptized on a Sunday and we might scoff. I know I've done that where you think, well, they're not really doing what church should be. And honestly, I look back and I say, no, I'm doing exactly what these Pharisees are doing in the story of the blind man. We're missing the point. The point in the story is Jesus heals a man. The Son of God physically heals someone who, who is blind their whole life. And nobody is celebrating what God is doing. Instead, they're so caught up in, well, how did it happen? Who Jesus really is? They're caught up in the nuances of the theology and they're missing the point. And I think to these own examples that I've had in my life where I've seen another ministry, another church do something, something remarkable, but in my jealousy, uh, in my own little box, I think to myself, well, that's not really, not really how I would do it. So therefore, they're not really doing it right. But God is at work. Uh, 300 people getting baptized is a celebration. And regardless if I'm in that church or not, I should be excited because those are 300 people who are now becoming followers of Jesus. And I think that's what he's talking about in this chapter. Uh, it brought a lot of insight uh, for, for me into that whole story of Jesus healing this man who was, who was born blind and not even his parents are celebrating. And I think to myself, well, we can just say, oh, those are the Pharisees. But no, we're still doing this today. We need to celebrate what God is doing. And well, there's one other story in this chapter that really stuck out to, to me, and that's the story of a woman named Margaret. And Margaret has a horrific childhood incident uh, where she has a, she has a terrible teacher uh, who doesn't like her, uh, who thinks Margaret is lazy. And so in order to teach Margaret a lesson, she has every student in the classroom come up and write negative things about Margaret on the chalkboard. Things like, Margaret is ugly, Margaret is fat, and the teacher is encouraging this. And I think 27 students get up there and write these horrible things. And of course, this scars this child for the rest of her life. And now here she is as a middle-aged adult, and she's struggling. Because guess what? All those negative things that were said about her, she basically lived them out. She she rose to the expectation of that negativity. 
And here she is meeting with a counselor and the counselor sits down with Margaret and they've been working through this. And on their final counseling session, when Margaret has made a lot of progress, the counselor asks Margaret to relive that moment, to relive every single word that those students wrote on the board. And she remembers every single one. And then the counselor ends it by saying, Margaret, you forgot there's a person missing. And Margaret's like, no, I didn't forget. I remember all the kids. I remember the teacher. And he goes, no, Jesus is sitting in that classroom. And Jesus is coming up to the chalkboard. And do you know what Jesus writes? Margaret is beautiful. Margaret is wonderful. Margaret is loved. Because he sees Margaret through his eyes. Because Margaret is his child. And that's, that is the heart of messy spirituality. That Jesus comes to us in all our mess, with all the negativity around us, and even our human weakness, where we don't celebrate the victories of God. And he still says, you are mine. I love you. I think... Um... This year has been very transformational for me. I went back to counseling this year. Yes, I am in ministry and I do go to counseling. And one of the things that caught me by surprise is we started talking about thoughts and I was challenged um, by my counselor to, to really pay attention about, uh, about all the expectations that I put on myself. And I realized that those expectations were because of past things that people had said to me that made me feel really bad about who I was. And, and I tried to, I set this unrealistic expectation in everything I did, um, kind of to try to prove myself. And I think to try to numb the hurts of the past. And um, so it, just realizing, I think this year that um, that's not who I am. I am who God says I am. Uh, just like Margaret in the story of, of writing the words on the chalkboard. And um, it's been a year really working on those thoughts and, and the expectations I have of myself as a mom, thinking I, I need to cook everything from scratch. And if my kids aren't on every sports team and um, you know honors lit, lists and all that, um, that I'm some kind of failure. But really realizing and listening to why I have those expectations and really thinking differently and seeing myself as God sees me. I hope that you will take time this week to read this chapter, but more importantly, I hope you do take this to heart, that whether you are a self-confessed mess, like we are, or not, know that God loves you and that God wants you to live this life for him. And we're not always going to do it well. We're not always going to do it perfectly, but let's do it for God. All right, we'll be back next week with another video. I hope to see you then. Bye-bye.